Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this red box over here is the B-Link GTR6. This system has a brand new AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX processor, which means that not only do we get the Zen 3 cores, but we also get an updated graphic solution that has made this system much better than the previous generation. At STH, we've been running a series on reviewing mini PCs. That includes the one liter Project Tiny Mini Micro PCs, as well as just some of the fun little boxes like these. And this particular unit has a fun backstory because after reviewing the previous generation GTR5, that one became uh, one that I just kind of put in my living room and put it next to my TV. And the dust that you see is actually a little feature that we're gonna talk about later. You also may have noticed some major styling differences. We're gonna get to all of that in a second. But first, this video is not really sponsored, but it is sponsored by the STH YouTube member. So if you wanna support us buying these systems so that way we can buy them and be independent when we review them, well, you can feel free to join as a member down below. That's how we get the budget to buy these things, outfit them and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanna say thank you to all the existing members for making this possible. With that, let's get to the hardware, starting with the outside. Okay, so the first thing is, let's just talk about the, the size of this unit. It is uh, it is pretty clearly a fairly compact unit. I actually have uh, just next to me one of the NUC 12. Uh, so this is what a NUC 12 looks like compared to this, just kind of give you an idea. I wouldn't say it's definitely like not way, way bigger, but it is certainly, you know, slightly larger. But inside you actually get some interesting capabilities. So let's talk about the front of this unit. Now, first off, this little section right here, if you see some of the photos instead of the B-roll, you're gonna notice that we got a lot of dust on here. This thing absolutely does collect dust and I, I don't know what to do about that. But there are some other features that are uh, more than just dust collection, of course. The first feature is that we get USB 3, we get a type A port, and then we also get a type C port. And then one of the nice features is we also get a headset jack. Some of the mini PCs don't have any audio jacks and I just kind of like the fact that at least there's a combo port on here. Now, aside from that, there's a power button, of course, and that lights up. You'll see that later in this video light up. But then, uh, you know, when we get over here, we have some very interesting AMD branding. We have the AMD Ryzen 9 6000 series because this has the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, which is really a notebook processor. We'll talk more about that performance in a bit. But then we also have the AMD Radeon graphics. Now, if you look at some of the marketing materials for this, you may see something that says like this has like a Radeon like, like 680M or something like that. Just be clear that this is an iGPU, so this is part of the CPU package, but this is using AMD's newer technology, so it is much better than the previous version. And then there's the green button, and this was a feature that was on the previous generation as well, and it's a clear CMOS button. Like, let's talk about one of the weirdest features that if you wanna go and reset the CMOS, you can do that by just clicking this green button here. But that also means that if you miss your power button and instead of clicking your power button here, you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's dark. I'm going to hit this button. You've now cleared your CMOS. So there are definitely reasons that, um, you know, I don't like that. I don't understand really why it's there. I don't like it. I wish it was like inside or something. Okay, let's get to the back of this unit because that is clearly where a lot of really fun stuff happens. This unit has four HDMI ports. So if you're trying to drive TVs, especially, you know, that's a very common thing. And there are a lot of very inexpensive HDMI monitors and stuff like that out there. You have a very easy connection. On the back, we also get four USB ports. They are all type A ports and you get two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports. Now, just kind of something that you will notice on a lot of other mini PCs, you get a lot more like USB-C connectivity. A lot of folks ask for Thunderbolt. If you need Thunderbolt, um, this is not the answer, right? That's just kind of what it is. The other two quick features on the back of this unit are that we have the DC power input put. We'll show you the power brick when we get to the power consumption section. And then we also have a two and a half gig ethernet port. I do wish that this had two network ports instead of just one. But on the other hand, at least having two and a half gig ethernet is a step in the right direction. Okay, so let's talk about the rest of the, the exterior before we get inside. Uh, on either side, you see that we have GTR branding, which is uh, pretty easy. This is the GTR6. I think B-Link did do a good job of simplifying their branding a little bit more versus the previous gen, so that's nice. Okay, but now let's talk about the top of this unit because this bright red. And this is really interesting, at least to me, because this is a big difference from the previous gen. The previous gen you'll see has like big AMD branding and stuff all the heck over the place. And this feels more like it's a B-Link unit rather than like an AMD unit. So I kind of like that. But that also means that this meshy part of the top, um, it's, it's not like a fabric-y type thing instead of just a like kind of like a metal-y type thing that was on the previous gen. And then, you know, you have a little bit more extension just because you don't have that big AMD branding, right? And then the other thing you can do, of course, is you can actually just pop off the top 
And then B-Link also has a black version, which, uh, you know, you pop on. And, uh, you know, I think this is a lot more subdued, right? I mean, it definitely definitely don't have this, that red, that bright red. I kind of like the fact that at least they recognize the fact that this looks cool, but for a lot of people, this is gonna be more practical. Speaking of practical, there's a really interesting feature that this has that things like the Intel Nook just don't have. And um, even Apple doesn't have this on their system itself. And what that is, is uh, this little feature down here, which is actually a fingerprint reader. So you can use things like the Windows Hello, you can do your biometrics. And when you actually set up the system, there are prompts to say like, hey, do you wanna go set up fingerprints? And you can just go click here and you know, ready to go. Before we get to the bottom and inside, I just wanna point out the fact that this unit is a lot different than the previous gen. The previous gen, if you saw the unit that's been sitting out for a couple months, there is definitely some dust that has accumulated near the two fans. So the GTR5 was a two fan design. This is a single fan design. We're gonna let you hear it a little bit later when we do the power consumption. We'll have links to chapters in the description. Okay, so let's talk about the bottom of the system real quick. So the first thing is that the bottom strips, these rubber strips are just awesome, right? Like there are a lot of companies that have like just little tiny little dots or something like that of rubber. And sometimes those rub off. These things are like on there, they're very solid. I haven't had any issues with grip on the version I've been using, the GTR5 version I've been using. So I really like the fact that they're continuing that here. There's also a little note here that says delete to get into the BIOS or F7 to do boot options. So if you need to know how to do that, you can, I guess, pick this up, look at the bottom of it and then start up the system. Okay, so to get into the system, there are four screws on the bottom and you just basically pop them out. And then uh, there's this little tab. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually a little tiny B-Link tab right here, which I just think is like one of the most fun features that you're ever gonna see. So that's just something that it helps you actually get the lid off, which is just really nice. Okay, so now that you're inside the system, you can see that we have another fan. This fan is really to cool the CPU and memory. So this is a different fan that was on the top, but this is also a newer feature in this generation. Now to get this fan out, there are a couple little screws and like you can see like these two right here, especially, they're actually pretty hard to get to. So you're gonna need a pretty skinny screwdriver. We're finally inside to the part that you probably wanna to get to if you wanna go service the system. And uh, the first thing I wanna just kind of point out is that there's this little heat sink that you're gonna see on the shroud right here. And then you're gonna see that we have these pretty thick thermal pads on the other side. That corresponds to the SSD area. So it actually is pretty hard to get this off just because you have to pry it a little bit. And on the SSD side, we get two SSD M.2 slots. First one, they're both uh, 80 millimeters, so 2280 slots. The first one is an NVMe slot. The second one is a SATA slot. They're labeled, and that is something I really like just because I think it is a little bit higher quality to actually label these things. You'll notice that the SSD that came with this is actually a Kingston KC3000, which is an M.2, but it's also a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, which I thought was really cool in a little system like this. The system that we purchased had a 512 gig SSD. The Wi-Fi solution is also really interesting. A lot of systems that use Ryzen processors will use the AMD MediaTek Wi-Fi unit, but this one actually uses an Intel unit, which is something that you know we don't frankly see that often. This unit is a Intel AX200 NGW. So just to kind of give you an idea of what you're gonna get here. Now, the memory in this is also super interesting because we get Crucial, which is Micron's consumer brand, but we get two Crucial 16 gigabyte DIMMs. So that means that we get two SO DIMMs that gives us a total of 32 gigabytes of memory. And frankly, that's a pretty good combo. I wish that the SSD was a terabyte, but on the flip side, having 32 gigs with an eight core CPU like this, I think is actually pretty awesome. I also just wanna point out really quick that a lot of the main PCs that we see from some other vendors and also like AliExpress and stuff like that, they have some very interesting uh, brands and stuff that we've never really seen in North America. And so the fact that you get Crucial and Kingston in this, I think is actually pretty nice. The other thing that I wanna point out about the memory though, is the fact that it does cost a bit more to have DDR5 today versus DDR4. So you do get a performance benefit from it. So it's definitely, you know, for a lot of folks, definitely gonna be worth it. But on the flip side, it does come at an additional cost. But of course, because this has an integrated RDNA 2 GPU, that means that the integrated GPU is using the system memory. So having more memory bandwidth with DDR5 to feed both the eight core 16 thread processor as well as the RDNA graphics, that is something that, um, you know, I think a lot of folks are gonna like. And that's one of the reasons that you get more performance out of the integrated GPU that's in this box. With that, let's get to the performance. 
Now the performance on this thing is actually really good. Now, if, if you don't know this between the Ryzen 5000 series and 6000 series, the CPU performance is just frankly not that huge of a Delta. We got better performance on this than we got on the previous generation. So the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, which is a eight core 16 thread processor certainly did very well here. We also generally see better performance on this processor because it's a 45 watt TDP part than some of the 35 watt TDP parts that we see in like the one liter PC segment. And that's just because you have another 10 watts of thermal headroom. Now, some of the newer Intel Alder Lake processors certainly are faster than this unit. And that's something that we just have to kind of say, but on the flip side, they tend to use a lot more power when they're hitting that extra, you know, performance level, right? So this is one of those things where it's a lower power part and you get good performance for that power consumption, but it's not necessarily the fastest mini PC you can get from a CPU standpoint. Now on the CPU side, this doesn't seem like a huge upgrade. And that's because the real thing that you get is a much faster GPU. Now we normally don't do GPU benchmarks because it's always just been integrated GPUs and they frankly have not been that exciting, but this seems like something different. Okay, now something that you guys ask about all the time on these little systems is like, can you game on them? And there are some kind of simple games that a lot of these systems will be able to go do. You know, if they're like, kind of like phone games that are like on x86 or something like that, then that's something that these systems all basically do because it's mostly CPU power. But what about something that, um, you know, is a little bit more fun to play? And, you know, frankly, a lot of these systems, like the previous generation GTR5 of this, really, it was it was pretty rough just, just gaming on it, right? But today I am here to appease you. So I got a little tiny mini travel monitor that I just kind of had. Uh, I have a gaming mouse and not a gaming keyboard that we're just gonna leave back here. But I figured let's go try a really popular esports title, League of Legends, and try it at both 4K and 1080. And one other thing on the setup is that not only is it gonna run League of Legends, but it's also gonna be running OBS so we can record the gameplay. And so I uh, just, we're gonna use a little FPS counter in the corner and then we're gonna see how it is. Now I set this up and we're just gonna run against bots and we're gonna do 1080 first and then we're gonna do 4K. And on the 1080, we're seeing that on the Valley, we're getting about 75 FPS. And at the peak, we're getting maybe in that 99 to 100 FPS range. And that's frankly a pretty darn good. This is a very playable uh, thing at 1080, 100%, even while doing the screen recording at the same time. Now, when we switch over to 4K, that's when things get a little bit more interesting. Frankly, I think that some of the valleys, you know, we're getting some valleys down into like the 45 FPS range, and those are definitely starting to get a little bit, you know, a little bit rougher, I would say. Uh, most of the game though is playing around 50 to 60 FPS, no problem. And so I would say that at 4K, it's uh, playable, but probably not a great experience. At 1080, I think that it's perfectly fine. I mean, you could definitely use this. It's not gonna be like a high-end system, but you know, if you just need need an extra system to play, you could definitely use this. Also, while I had this hooked up to the power meter while doing this, I did notice that the peaks that we were getting were anywhere from, you know, about 60 to 65 watts. And then we would get these momentary peaks that would hit a little over 70 and maybe 75 watts or so. So really that's kind of the range while gaming. It's actually not too bad. The system definitely makes some noise though. So if you don't have headphones, um, it's you're definitely gonna hear it. Okay, let's talk about power consumption and noise. Okay, so what I thought we would do is let's take the GTR6 and see both the power consumption and also the noise, because I think that's a pretty important part of the story. All right, so first things first, uh, you know, you're gonna turn it on right here. A little light will come on. Okay, now here's the sound of this thing just uh, as it's starting up. I'll we'll have the power consumption for that too. Okay, so there are a few things I wanna just talk about real quick with this, right? So the first thing is if you look at the idle power consumption, I'm just kind of watching here, it's like, you know, eight to maybe 10 or 11 watts. So it's kind of like in that range and it does jump around a bit because that's a modern processor for you. Um, the thing that I do want to talk about is a little bit about the noise here. So I let you hear the startup noise, but let me hit, let me go. And again, we're about, uh, you know, about that far away from the, uh, from the mic. And uh, let me just kind of give you the sound here. So, I mean, the thing about this is it's definitely not quiet and you're only talking about like a 10 watt idle. So it's just one of those things where I wish that this was a little bit quieter, especially at idle. I mean, cause just imagine you had this as like a home theater PC, it's sitting next to your TV and maybe you're not even using it, right? Maybe you're using something else. And like, what happens when this little fan is going and you can hear it and you're just like, wait, I'm not even using the thing. I do want to point out though, that we do have this in 45 watt mode, uh, which is the default. You can put it in like 35 watt mode. Um, and that does lower power consumption quite a bit, but also just 
means that you get less performance. So then why are you buying a higher performing chip? I don't know. Uh, but I want to just kind of show you this real quick. What happens when we go and we actually start running a workload on that? Okay, so I just started running a multi-threaded workload. And you can see that we're gonna get into like around 60-ish watts, maybe a little over 60 watts at some times. And uh, I just, I'm just gonna note a couple things. First off, you're definitely getting a little bit of heat out of the back of this, because that's where the, the vents are. But then the other thing, uh, let me just let you hear this. And again, uh, this is about how far we are away from the fancy mic. And if you listen to that, it's, you can definitely hear that thing, right? And just as a quick note, you can still hear this thing and it's still, you know, it's pretty low. It's like under 10 Watts and it's just cooling itself down. So that just really tells me that this thing needs a different or bigger thermal solution. I think the challenge is right. Like if you added a bigger thermal solution, maybe you make the box that's this big and maybe that's, uh, that's what happens. The one thing though, that is very different about this versus some of the other systems that we've seen is just the power consumption is actually not that bad. I mean, just to put this in perspective here, this is the Intel, this is a 12th gen pro nook. So the uh, Wall Street Canyon nook, this thing will actually go and use something like 90 plus Watts, right? So you're talking about a system that can use 90 plus Watts versus one that we're seeing is really in that like maybe 65 ish watt range max. I mean, maybe you can get a little more than that, but but the difference on the same workloads is like like 50% more almost for the Intel solution. The Intel solution of course is a little bit faster, but um, you know, that, that's a big difference in terms of how big this unit is versus the Intel Nook and how much power they're using. So that's why I feel that the B-Link team could make this a little bit quieter. That would be a huge benefit, right? Because, I mean, I would love to have a system like this that's quiet um, and it, it just, you do notice the noise. Okay, so with all these units, I love to have key lessons learned because I feel like we've done so many of these mini PCs, you have to learn something. And to me, the stand down of this is like probably two things. The first one is that the CPU may not be a lot faster, but the gaming performance, especially in like esports titles, seems to be pretty decent using integrated graphics. I mean, I was playing League of Legends at 4K on this, which I was not expecting to be at all playable. And it was not a great experience, but it wasn't too bad. And if you're doing 1080, you can record the game at the same time that you're actually playing it, which I think is kind of awesome from an integrated GPU solution, right? The second key lesson learned though is also just the power consumption side. So on one hand, we, you know, maybe got this thing up to like hit max peak, somewhere around that like 75 watt range. We really get that much higher than that. And given that it's much larger, there are two fans in it, right? One for cooling the bottom, one for cooling the top. I was kind of hoping that this would be a very quiet unit. And frankly, it wasn't. I mean, I, I wish that this was a lot quieter than the GTR5, but I think it might actually be louder. Like every time I put it next to the GTR5 and I turn one on, turn the other one on, I, this one definitely feels louder to me. And the GTR5 to me is if, you know, you're sitting, call it 10 feet, like three meters away or so. It seems to be like the one that is just a little bit like right on the cusp of being too loud. That's kind of a bummer. In fact, I would just say this, if B-Link made this a little bit larger of a chassis, like just slightly larger, but we're, we're able to get this to be like a sub 30 dBA like solution, I think that would be much better because this thing really could be silent and I wish it was silent or at least much closer to being silent. With that, I really like this unit. I think that it really didn't need more CPU performance, but the GPU was was lacking in the previous gen. This kind of fixes that to a large extent, which I really like, while also maintaining the same or similar form factor. I think the pricing of it, of just, you know, in that 800 to $850 range, feels like it's definitely priced at a bit of a premium, but when we look at things like the Wall Street Canyon Nooks that we just reviewed, it's actually right in line with that and probably has some capabilities for a lot of folks that are better like that GPU versus having things like Thunderbolt, which there are folks that really need Thunderbolt. And then there are folks that just will never use it. And so I do think that there are some trade-offs with the different systems, but I do think that this is gonna be one of those ones that I think you know people will like because you could actually have, you know, if you had like kids come over or they want to game on it or something like that, they could totally go do that. I also really like the fact that even though there is some AMD branding, it's a lot less than the previous gen. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the B-Link GTR6. If you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.